Okay, so hello everyone. Today, let us talk about cranking no start problem. Okay, so as you have seen, if your engine is not going to start in the first three to five seconds upon ignition, and you have tried it at least three times with the same result, stop there and pop the bonnet open. And take a look at what is wrong. Otherwise, you just keep cranking your engine. You will just end up with a drained battery. Now, the very first thing that you would want to do is to try to bleed the air out from this manual pump. And try to start your engine. If it doesn't work, try to bleed the air out from here. I have shown how to do that in my video 456 hard start problem, link of which is in the description below. Now, say after bleeding the air out from this manual pump, even on this fuel pump, your engine still does not start. The next thing that you would want to do is to make sure that your fuel solenoid is working. And that is this guy right here. Now this fuel solenoid serves as a valve. Just like a water valve. Wherein you can turn it on and turn it off. When you turn the ignition switch on, this valve opens and allows this cell to be introduced inside your engine. And when you turn the switch off, the solenoid closes and stops the flow of diesel, hence your engine shuts off. So all too often, when you have a cranking no-start problem, especially on a 45.6, this is oftentimes the culprit. However, before you actually condemn this and buy a new one, it is important to conduct a process of elimination. That way we can be sure and avoid wasting money. So get your multimeter, and if you don't have one, something like this will do. But preferably a multimeter is better. But if you only have this, before deciding to use this, make sure that this thing works, okay? So I clamp it here, and I will check if it's working. Yes, it is. Now that we are sure that this thing is working, turn the ignition key to the on position, okay? Then check if there's any voltage being supplied. To that okay and there is now be, ca be careful not to short this with the body of the fuel pump okay so in this case we're sure that power is being supplied we will confirm that with our multimeter okay and we're getting a reading of 12.1 volts and that is actually good Say for example, if you do not see any voltage output here, don't immediately assume that it is your ignition switch that is faulty. At times, the harness that holds this wire can become broken, on here, on this part, or maybe here, okay? So that is why current from this wire may not be transferred here. So in order to be sure, try to perform that same check here, okay? So it's working. Okay, so as you can see, power is being supplied. Now, if there is no power being supplied here or here, what you would want to do is to check your fuse. Now, this is an old style fuse, but basically they all work under the same principle. Now, the next thing that you would want to do is to put your multimeter on your continuity test and let's perform continuity. And it should beep, as you can hear, it's beeping. It's beeping as well, and it's beeping here too, so there's nothing wrong with our fuse. I will also perform the same continuity test here, and it's beeping. So now that we are sure that we have no problem with our ignition switch, our fuse as well as the wirings, let's go back to this fuel solenoid. However, before deciding to remove this, let's perform one last check. Turn the ignition switch to the on position again and try to connect and disconnect this. And you should hear a clicking sound. You see? I hope you can hear that. So when you connect this, you should hear a clicking sound. And if you don't, that means your fuel solenoid is no longer working. 
So now you can finally go out and buy and replace this fuel solenoid. Now just to satisfy your curiosity, I'll go ahead and remove this, but first we will disconnect the negative terminal first in order to avoid short. Okay, so first we need to remove this 8 millimeter. Okay. Okay. Next is use an adjustable wrench that just loosen that. <clears throat> okay. Okay, we just need to loosen that. And once that is loose enough, you can undo that by hand. Now, now be careful, okay? I'll show you, I'll just show you. Okay. I'll remove this, and then there's a spring as well as this valve. That's, hold on. Okay, so this sp spring as well as this valve is supposed to go there, okay? Like so. And your fuel solenoid is something like this now should you turn the ignition switch to on it's going to pull this up and when you turn it off it's going to let go of that if you actually want to make sure that this thing is actually working what you need to do is just grab something like this a wire and before you conduct this test make sure that you're going to stop this from flying out okay the body of the solenoid on the negative terminal and and i make come into contact with the positive see it is pulling it up so it is working so now we're actually sure that this thing is working so I'm going to mount this again on the fuel pump no need to put Teflon tape on here there's a rubber seal here to avoid leaks as well as this is tapered okay and when you put this in, make sure that you line it up on that hole, okay? Then tighten it by hand, okay? Now when you tighten this, make sure not to overdo it. Like I've said, there's a rubber seal on the fuel solenoid to avoid any leaks. Just make sure that it's snug and that will do. If you over tighten this, you risk the possibility of cracking this housing and that's going to be expensive. Okay, so now that we have the fuel solenoid installed, let's reconnect the wire. It can be fiddly. Okay, so again, when tightening this down, don't overdo it. Just make it snug. Otherwise, you'll ruin the fuel solenoid. Now, before you even bother to start the engine, make sure that all the connections are connected as well as the fuse, then prime your fuel pump by bleeding the air out of here and also bleed the air out of here then start your engine now say for example after doing that your engine still won't start the next thing that you will do is to loosen this nut, okay? and then hold this one as well okay, this one okay, and the last one Okay. Now just loosen this, okay? Don't remove it, just loosen them all up until you're sure that the fuel lines, all four of them are already loose. Now, because what we will do is we will start the engine and, and we will try to see if there's diesel that is going to squirt out of this, okay? Next thing that I will do is I'm going to crank this engine. The engine is only going to crank and it's not going to start because we have loosened up this fuel line. So as you can see, this cell is being squared out from here so that means from this pump to here diesel is being introduced now that we're sure diesel is being pumped from here to here we can then tighten them all back again one by one
Okay. And now when we crank our engine, it should start with no problem. See? Now say after doing all that, your engine still won't start. The next thing that you would want to check is, although very unlikely, very very unlikely, is try to check your engine timing. Maybe your fuel pump is out of timing, or, or maybe the X-hose or in-hose valves of your engine is out of timing, but uh, very unlikely. So we have checked the wiring, we have checked the solenoid, we have checked that there is no air here, no air here. Diesel is being introduced on our diesel injectors. The fuse is good, the ignition switch is good, the battery is also good because it's able to crank your engine. Now if your engine still won't start after doing all that, what you would want to do, well actually we don't want to do this, but say for example you're desperate, find yourself a lighter fluid, anything that is highly flammable. Actually I don't want to do this to my engine, but just so I can show you, put a couple of squirts of lighter fuel fluid in the intake let the fluid vaporize for a few seconds then start your engine anyway, so that method is only for when you are desperate just use some lighter fluid but in any event should you require a lighter fluid just to just so you can start the engine I suggest that the next thing that you should do is perform a compression test and a leak down test. Because if your engine has good compression and good fuel delivery, there should be no problem with your engine starting. So anyway, I do believe that's it. That's all that I can show you. So usually when you have a cranking no start problem, this usually is the culprit, okay? Like I've said, after doing all that I've showed you, still your engine won't start, then most probably your engine most probably no longer has good compression especially only if it's going to start if you're going to introduce lighter fluid inside here so if it's going to start then you can say that there's no problem with your diesel injectors now if you have noticed in the beginning with this video I was able to make this engine to crank but not start the only way I did that is that I disconnected this terminal that sends power to this okay so all in all I do believe that's it I do believe that's all that I can show you and share with you. So if you like this video, please share, subscribe, like, only if you want to again. Only if you want to, and as always, thank you for watching.